Um, so this person just got diagnosed with Lyme. They got that positive diagnosis. Um, and they also have COVID um, long haulers. So any advice on how to track healing to know which one it is or if she actually has both? Uh, it's got both. Yeah, that's the deal. Um, you know, what, what, my journey that even has carried me beyond the book. When we look at infection, an infection is a microbe trying to break into the body. That's what an infection is. And what microbes want is nutrients. And where they get those nutrients is our cells, our whole body. All the cells in our body are food for microbes. And microbes are tr constantly trying to break through barriers to get at them. And if our immune system has no built-in immunity against the microbe, that can be devastating. So if, if looking at something like Ebola that humans have never been exposed to and we no, don't have any immune to, immunity to, when that hits the bloodstream, it's devastating. It ravages all the cells in the body. Um, but so these things, these low-grade pathogens, Bartonella borrelia, you know, I gave a presentation on Bartonella last night, and most people who get infected with Bartonella do not get sick. They have a mild transient illness and they don't go to the doctor and they don't get antibiotics and all the symptoms resolve. But just because the symptoms are gone doesn't mean the bacteria is gone, are gone. So what happens is when these things hit the bloodstream, often with, with, a, uh, with a tick bite or a mosquito bite or a flea bite or whatever, they get injected into the bloodstream so we don't even know it. And the immune system is immediately knocking down their numbers to get rid of them by gobbling them up. White blood cells gobble up the microbes because it recognizes them and it's going after them. You know, it's on it from the very time they, they hit our bloodstream. But these things are amazingly sophisticated. It's a game that's been going on, this cat and mouse game for a very long time. So we know that a lot of these microbes, this has been proven for Bartonella, Borrelia, COVID, or coronavirus, all of the different microbes have this thing called a Trojan horse mechanism that some of them stay alive inside the white blood cell. So the white blood cell becomes a vehicle that carries them throughout the body and deposits them in the brain, in the joints, in the heart, throughout the body. Different microbes infect different cells. But by then, by the time they get to tissues, it's really super low concentrations of microbes. So your tissues basically just get peppered. As soon as they get to the tissues, they infect cells because cells give them protection from the immune system and protection from antibiotics. But here we're talking about just a slight peppering, just a few cells that are infected with microbes here and there. But the immune system, to take out, it can't kill the microbes, so it has to kill the cell. But if it's too aggressive, then it damages a lot of the surrounding tissue. So what it does is it produces antibodies to kill the infected cell, but the antibodies also stick to and kill normal cells, which is what autoimmunity is. So there's a stalemate that the immune system just kind of backs off and says, all right, we're going to keep a thumb on these things, but I don't think we can eradicate them. And they can stay dormant and just be there for your whole lifetime. And we're finding that the rate of Bartonella in, in, in normal, healthy people is about 10 to 30 percent. Mycoplasma, much higher than that. Borrelia, some statistics have shown up to 30 percent different populations, these microbes are present without causing illness. But you come along and you get your immune system disrupted by stress or an automobile accident, or possibly just a new tick bite with a new load of microbes, then they start becoming active and they start, and they start infecting other cells. And then the immune system has to get active and starts making more antibodies to more tissue. So that autoimmune phenomenon is a key part of chronic Lyme disease.
and every other chronic illness. So you can't tell me that microbes aren't driving these things, but that list of 100 or so microbes I gave you, I think it's just scratching the surface. There's a whole lot more out there than looking at.